Product designer John Yablonski recently created an incredible website outlining the maxims and principles that designers can consider when designing user interfaces. It's called Laws of UX, and John was kind enough to give me permission to bring his principles to you in this video. Over the next few minutes, you'll learn the names of these 19 principles, along with their origins and how to apply them. Let's start with the aesthetic usability effect. Users often perceive aesthetically pleasing design as design that's more usable. In 1995, researchers Masaki Kurosu and Kaori Kashimura from the Hitachi Design Center tested 26 variations of an ATM UI. They found a stronger correlation between the participants' ratings of aesthetic appeal and perceived ease of use than the correlation with actual ease of use. The Doherty Threshold Productivity soars when a computer and its users interact at a pace that ensures that neither has to wait on the other. In 1982, Walter Doherty and Arvin Tadani published in the IBM Systems Journal a research paper that set the requirement for computer response time to be 400 milliseconds, not 2,000 milliseconds, which had been the previous standard. When a human being's command was executed and returned an answer in under 400 milliseconds, it was deemed to exceed the Doherty threshold and use of such applications was deemed to be more addicting to users. Fitz Law The time it takes to acquire a target is a function of the distance to and size of the target. So make elements you wish to be easily selectable, large, and position them close to users. In 1954, psychologist Paul Fitz, examining the human motor system, showed that the time required to move to a target depends on the distance to it, yet relates inversely to its size. By his law, fast movements and small targets resulted in greater error rates due to the speed-accuracy trade-off. Fitz's law is widely applied in UX and UI design. Hicks' law. The time it takes to make a decision increases with the number of and complexity of choices. Ideally, you should simplify choices for the user by breaking down complex tasks into smaller steps. In 1952, William Edmund Hick and Ray Hyman set out to examine the relationship between the number of stimuli present and an individual's reaction time to any given stimulus. As you would expect, the more stimuli to choose from, the longer it takes for the user to make a decision on which one to interact with. Users bombarded with choices have to take time to interpret and decide, giving them work they don't want. Jacob's Law Users spend most of their time with other interfaces, this means that users prefer your interface to work the same way as the others they already know. Jacob Nielsen, president of the Nielsen Norman Group, co-founded with Don Norman of Apple, established the quote-unquote discount usability engineering movement for fast and cheap improvements of user interfaces. In short, you can simplify the learning process for users by providing familiar design patterns. The Law of Common Region Elements tend to be perceived in groups if they're sharing an area with a clearly defined boundary. The principles of grouping, or Gestalt laws of grouping, are a set of principles in psychology first proposed by Gestalt psychologists to account for the observation that humans have an innate tendency to perceive objects as organized patterns, a principle known as prognance. Gestalt principles are organized into five categories, proximity, similarity, continuity, closure, and connectedness. Law of Prognons People will perceive and interpret ambiguous or complex images as the simplest form possible, because it's the interpretation that requires the least cognitive effort for us. The human eye likes to find simplicity and order in complex shapes to prevent us from becoming overwhelmed with information. In 1910, psychologist Max Wertheimer had an insight where he observed a series of lights flashing on and off at a railroad crossing. To the observer, it appeared as if a single light moves traveling from bulb to bulb, when in reality it's a series of bulbs turning on and off, and the lights don't move at all. This observation led to a set of descriptive principles about how we visually perceive objects. Law of proximity. Objects that are near, or proximate to one another, tend to be grouped together. The law of proximity is useful by allowing users to group different clusters of content at a glance. Proximity is one of the psychological principles of the Gestalt laws of grouping. Law of similarity. The human eye tends to perceive similar elements in a design as a complete picture, shape, or group, even if those elements are separated. So ensure that links and navigation systems are visually differentiated from normal text elements and are consistently styled. Similarity is another one of the psychological principles of the Gestalt laws of grouping. 
the law of uniform connectedness. Elements that are visually connected are perceived as more related than elements with no connection. So group functions of a similar nature so that they're visually connected via colors, lines, frames, or other shapes. Connectedness is yet another one of the psychological principles of the Gestalt laws of grouping. Miller's Law. The average person can only keep seven items in their working memory, plus or minus about two. So organize content into groups of five to nine items at a time. In 1956, George Miller asserted that the span of immediate memory and absolute judgment were both limited to around seven pieces of information. The point where confusion creates an incorrect judgment is considered the channel capacity. Occam's razor. Among competing hypotheses that predict equally well, the one with the fewest assumptions should be selected. Occam's razor is a problem-solving principle attributed to William of Occam, who was an English Franciscan friar, scholastic philosopher, and theologian in the early 1300s. Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle states that for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from only 20% of the causes. So focus the majority of effort on the areas that'll bring the largest benefits to the most users. Its origins stem back to Vilfredo Pareto, an economist who noticed that 80% of Italy's land was owned by 20% of the population. Though it may seem vague or a tad removed, the 80-20 way of thinking can provide insightful and endlessly applicable analysis of lopsided systems, including user experience strategy. Parkinson's Law. Any task will inflate until all of the available time is spent. Articulated by Cyril Northcote Parkinson as part of the first sentence in a humorous essay published in The Economist in 1955. It was reprinted with other essays in the book, Parkinson's Law, The Pursuit of Progress. He derived the dictum from his extensive experience in the British Civil Service. Postel's Law. Be liberal in what you accept and conservative in what you send. This means accepting variable input from users, translating input to meet the requirements, and providing clear feedback to the user. Postel's Law, also known as the Robustness Principle, was formulated by John Postel, an early pioneer of the internet. The law is a design guideline for software, specifically in regards to TCP and networks. Serial Position Effect Users have a propensity to best remember the first and last items in a series. Placing the least important items in the middle of lists can be helpful because these items tend to be stored less frequently in long-term and working memory. The serial position effect, a term coined by Herman Ebbinghaus, describes how the position of an item in a sequence affects recall accuracy. The two concepts involved, the primacy effect and the recency effect, explain how items presented at the beginning of a sequence and the end of a sequence are recalled with greater accuracy than items in the middle of a list. Tesler's Law also known as the law of conservation of complexity, states that for any system, there's a certain amount of complexity which cannot be reduced. While working for Xerox in the mid-1980s, Larry Tesler argued that in most cases, an engineer should spend an extra week reducing the complexity of an application versus making millions of users spend one extra minute using the application. However, Bruce Tognazzini proposes that people resist reductions to the amount of complexity in their lives. Thus, when an application is simplified, users begin attempting more complex tasks. The von Restorff effect, also known as the isolation effect, predicts that when multiple similar objects are present, the ones that differ from the rest are the most likely to be remembered. So make important information or key actions visually distinctive. The theory was coined by German psychiatrist and pediatrician Hedwig von Restorff, who in her 1933 study found that when participants were presented with a list of categorically similar items, with one distinctive isolated item on the list, memory for that item was improved. The Zygarnik Effect People remember uncompleted or interrupted tasks better than completed tasks. Bluma Wolfovna Zygarnik was a Soviet psychologist and psychiatrist, in the 1920s, she conducted a study on memory, in which she compared memory in relation to incomplete and complete tasks. She had found that incomplete tasks are easier to remember than successful ones. That's it. And another huge thanks to John Yablonski for making this video possible. I'm Joseph Angelo Tadero, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I'll have more great content coming soon, and visit lawsofux.com.